Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, I've had loads and loads of ideas about what you guys want me to breed. You've been sending me all your different species in and everything else. And I've had a good look through every single one of them. Look at these two bickering away, waiting for their breakfast. Let's give them a little bit of food, I think, because they're used to me being in the tank. Now I've moved this tank from inside my house into the workshop and I'll put it on the bench. Here you go, have a little bit of flake food then. And um, and they seem to be quite happy out here. I've been doing a bit of decorating in the house, so it always worries me about fumes and paint fumes and things. I know you can cover the tanks up, but I've had these guys for a long, long time, and I don't want anything nasty happening to them. And fumes and things like that tend to get drawn to the surfaces of the water as well. So I brought them out here, a couple of gallons out, probably dropped it down to about here, I should say, and then lifted it up. Lovely little Evo tanks put it in here and it's rearing to go again look at that topped it up with water give it a water change and these little guys are happy look at that I tell you what that male's put on so much weight he's nearly the same size now as his girlfriend we got these gorgeous little fan worms here which came in on a rock those little guys there they're little twins as I call them now they've been growing in there for some time and they got lovely big plumes on them now the one on the right just shed the plume off I don't know if I've mentioned it in other videos before, but with these fan worms, it's like a net and it's very, very fine, little feathery filaments on there and they catch the detritus and things in the water that circulates around little bits of food and then they close back up, draw it inside like that and then clean it all off the feathers. But over time, these things do get damaged. So sometimes you might find that they'll go in and you may find that plume just floating around the tank and you might think to yourself, Oh dear, it's died, but be patient because what they normally do is they'll cast off their old net. You can take that out and then give it a couple of weeks and they'll grow a brand new one and they'll come out, but it'll look quite small at first, but then slowly it'll just fill out like a butterfly's wings and then you'll be back up to speed again and they've got a brand new fishing net there, raring to go. Now last time I showed you this tank, I had quite a lot of different algae in there. I've still got some grape calerpa in there and some other small different types so like little sea lettuce and a bit of bryopsis weed in there which can be a bit of a nuisance but it seems to be okay on that one little rock there at the moment some other little red streamer weed there I'm not really sure what that one is and some other types over there but there was one piece that was here and it literally grew that big I completely forgot to take a picture of it and um, I took it out and I put it in one of my other tanks in my coral room but we thin things out again. The plate in Monty's growing away there. The pulsing zinnia is pulsing away beautifully and sent off a lot of little splinter groups throughout the tank here and everywhere, which I'll pull out. And I normally put them in my coral room. And I give them away to people with uh, when they buy other corals from me and things. And then I sh I'll just give them away if they want a piece. It can be invasive. But if you keep it on a rock in the centre, like that you'll only get these little bits come off now and again and you can easily take them out give them away take them down your shop for some credit or something but everything's looking nice they've got the gorgonium which is now behind that colony there um, we've got some grape colerpa growing at the top as well which I will probably remove the, the green star polyps as always they're still creeping along the back there over halfway now they're going to want that to go all the way around there's some more little bits here and here as well which are going to start to grow up the sides in time everything else is nice and healthy we've got that beautiful um, anemone there that sand sand anemone and I've got another couple in there as well you can just see the rose bubble tip up here that's doing nicely that moves around quite regularly and also we got that little golden cabbage coral there sorry not cabbage coral that leather coral toadstool there which is all closed up at the moment and what they do as well if some of you guys out there have asked me and messaged me and said when these things close up are they not well or what happens is is algae builds up on the surface of these on all softies and then over a time you'll find a little skin will just peel away from there and that takes all that old algae off and it leaves it all brand new underneath again and then all those little polyps will come out and it'll expand again maybe it can, sometimes can take a week other times less all depending on flow but when you do see that and you do see these little tiny ribbons coming off and that skin start to lift. Get a turkey baster in there and just give it a little puff away like that and it'll blow it straight off and then you can suck it back out with a turkey baster and discard that away. Um, 
and clear that out of the way. But look at that, everything's looking really nice in there at the moment. These guys have laid a couple of clutches of eggs under there where that turbo snail is. He's cleaning up the place again at the moment. And um, we've got another big one there as well. A few little aptasias here and here, but I'm not too fussed about those guys. I'll just take them out. Oh, look at that, there's a tiny little crab there, which I've not seen. Can you see him? He's like a little blue crab. Now, I've never seen that before. He's right there, look. Little blue crab. Let's see if we can get a close up on that little dude. Wow, look at that. I've not seen one of those guys before. He's got very, very long, long claws. If he'll put his claw out. I'm not sure if it's some kind of Mithrax crab. It doesn't actually look like one at all. Normally you can tell what are naughty crabs and what aren't naughty crabs by the claw shape. Now, with Mithrax crabs, they're algae eaters and they've got little, like, little spoons at the end of their claws because they scrape away algae and detritus from things. But if it's got little spiky claws, look at that, look at that, see? Big long claw like a spider crab would be. Very unusual. That's something I haven't seen before, which has just come in on some of the live rock or with the corals. There's tiny, probably a tiny, tiny little crab Hello, he's saying, come into my cave. That's absolutely fantastic, look at that. Beautiful little blue, light blue colour as well. That's amazing, isn't it? The things you get. What I love to do at night is get the torch and then wait for a couple of hours after dark and just put the torch on and see what's lurking around in there. And sometimes you can find all sorts creeping about. You can, I've, I've found that sea slugs appear, i found all different things appear over the years. Are you going to come out and say hello? Be interesting to see all of you. Oh, you're a cute looking little guy, you are. He's probably after that flake food. What's his claws like on the end? Are they flat? <laughs> or are they pinchy? Don't you see him picking up all little bits there? Well, if you guys know what this little crab is, Leave it in the comment section below, because I've never seen one before. In all my years of keeping corals and weird and wonderful things from the deep, I've never seen one like that before. Absolutely fabulous, look at that. He's waving his arm like a little... Oh, I think one of the clownfish spooked him then. He's waving his arms like a little fiddler crab, like you see the fiddler crabs do. Lots and lots of little bugs on the glass, little copepods as well eating that little bit of algae there that I've missed with the algae scraper. It's like he's beckoning us into his little lair, look at that. That's amazing. Let's see how close we can get. That's made my day looking at that little guy, it really has, look at that. Hey, it looks like he's got little pinches, little flat pincers for, for clearing up things. Hello! He's saying hello to all you guys on Mark's Aquatics. Fabulous stuff. Pulsing Xenia, I absolutely love it. Look at that. Fabulous stuff. And the clownfish have hosted it. They've got a lovely anemone up there. Look at that, that lovely rose bubble tip anemone. And they've got that gorgeous sandflower anemone down there. But they have taken to the Pulsing Xenia. They've hosted that. They always swim in and out of the front of it there. And I don't see them swim anywhere else. They don't swim in amongst that. They don't host that at all. Now this little rock is, like I said before, it's got all kinds over it. It's got a little bristle worm there, I think. We've always got bristle worms in our tanks. They're good little detritus cleaners. They can make you itch a little bit. There's those lovely zoanthid colony there. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. And there's that gagonian at the back. Which is looking nice. And those gorgeous little fan worms. Some lovely uh, mushrooms in here as well, little Recordia humors which have been sprouting away. Got some different ones over here as well. There's our little mate again down there. A few little Redactus mushrooms as well. I've still got a little chilli coral down the back there. You see the little red one puts out lovely little white polyps in the evening when the lights go off. And we add a little bit of reefroids in there and some 
ocean nutrition as well for it all to feed off of us when the lights go off little newly budded off little uh, mushroom there as well there's always something happening in this tank always something going on and a lot of you guys that have bought them have um, are, are really enjoying these tanks because this I mean they're only this this sort of size I got that little filter bag in the side there with the sponges in I haven't uprated anything no skimmer in here heater in there obviously some little bits of media in the bottom but that's it with that live rock and everything else it keeps the tank looking spot on Whoa, out of focus there anyway guys just a little quick update there on the old fluval evo i know a few of you guys wanted me to show you it and i've got another load of coral coming in shortly so we're going to be putting that and some of it into this tank as well so we'll be doing another little swapperoo around at the moment keeping these guys busy giving them new things to look at and adding more weird and wonderful creatures to the tank but thanks for tuning into this little video the next video we're going to be doing is the breeding video setup okay and i'll show you what i've been doing and getting tanks ready for something to breed okay anyway as always your stars love you loads take care and i'll see you on the next edition of mark's aquatics bye for now